Larry, I think when you're ready. Okay. I guess we'll start. Uh, call the meeting to order. Mr. Zarzecki, can you please call the roll? Mr. Chick? Here. Mr. Kuzno? Yeah. Here. Did you hear me? Uh, Mr. Dreyer? Present. Mr. Quinto? Present. Mr. Thank you. Ms. Safante? Yeah. Here. Did you hear me? He's muted right uh, now. Mr. Muted. Dreyer. Yes. Okay. And Larry, Mr. Mr. Roman. Quinto. Present. Here. Thank you. And Zarzecki present. So everybody Mr. is present. Fonte. He's muted right now. Muted. Yes. Okay. And Larry, Mr. Roman. Here. And Zarzecki present. So everybody is present. Thank you. I make a motion. We adopt the agenda. Uh, anyone from the public uh, is welcome to make a comment to uh, the Planning Commission. Um, if you'd like to make a comment, uh, use the raise hand feature and I will activate um, your voice. It looks like we have, um, other than our staff here tonight, uh, possibly two participants, Matt and Bob, and I'm not seeing either of them with their hand raised. Um, so I think that uh, we don't have any comments from the public this evening. Okay, very good. Uh, there be no clarification from commissioners in that in that case. Uh, there's no correspondence that I'm aware of. No public hearings tonight. We'll go to reports of committees, board of trustees. Miss Chick. Uh, the board met on June 23rd. Basically handled uh, regular business. The uh, other uh, item that would be um, a important to the planning commission is that there was a motion to have the planning commission investigate and um, consider the four marijuana facility emergency use license types and that failed on a uh, three to three vote. So there is no action on those uh, licenses. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, ZBA report Mr. Cousineau. Uh, ZBA has not met since our last meeting. Thank you. Anything from Ms. Bird on staff? None, thank you. Mr. Lippins, planning consultant report. Uh, you know, I would just say briefly uh, on the board report as well, uh, I think if there were two motions made, one to not move forward at all, and that failed 3-3, three, three, and then one to move forward on the uses, and that also failed 3-3. Three, three. Um, so I, I believe the board will at some point, um, place it on the agenda again when they have seven board members there. Uh, that's what I and I took from that meeting was that they would take it up at a, a future date. Um, so we will be waiting for that. We do have um, an applicant who has requested a text amendment to permit uh, one of those uses. Um, so in lieu of getting some direction from the board, um, I will be working to process that application. Um, and I would say, you know, at some point in the future, either planning commission will have that item on their agenda or a, um, motion from the board or both. So, uh, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Parks and Rocks report, Mr. Quinto. Thank you. So the community garden is, uh, we still do have some boxes left for individuals if you would still like it. There is good summer and fall gardening and the Bark Park is uh, doing well. So uh, it is open and uh, waiting for people to bring their pets in. So uh, again, in the township park, that is adjacent to the post office. The one mile trail loop is a very nice walking path for all residents. You can walk it, you can uh, run it, you can bike it. Uh, it is a very nice path along with, please take advantage of the picnic tables and the lake amenity for all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, downtown planning group reformist in Ponte.
We lost her. May have lost this in front. Looks like it. Okay. Um, we'll go to item nine, um, unfinished business. It's a plan or introduction of marijuana facility cases. Um, uh, yeah, um, Mrs. Infante dropped a, a, a message there that she became disconnected. So we'll move on. Uh, Mr. Lippins uh, on the unfinished business. Um, yes, so uh, at our last meeting, we, we, we have moved forward and scheduled uh, public hearings um, for uh, six cases um, for the, the July 15 meeting. Um, and what I wanted to do was uh, go through, um, well, uh, at the last meeting, uh, Trustee Chick requested that Planning Commission be given all the materials relating to those cases in advance because there's so many. And uh, I think everyone could tell from your packet there was more than 140 pages of materials related to these cases. So I thought it was good to get it to you in advance. I think the one thing that I do wanna to say tonight is none of these cases were placed on the agenda to discuss. So I really don't wanna discuss anything about the individual proposals, but I thought it would be good for me to just walk through what cases they are, uh, when the applications came in, and then maybe I could even share my screen and just show everybody where they were, like a little tour of where the, where the sites were located. Um, and that then I think the other thing I'd like to discuss is um, whether or not Planning Commission is open to allowing um, applicants to make kind of PowerPoint presentations or share any graphics when they, we do the public hearings with them. Um, Cause if so, I'm just gonna work on the tech, technology issues with them uh, and maybe some parameters like boil it down to three slides or have one graphic that you'd like to show. Um, but if planning commission is open to that, I think we could also just talk about how we want to, you know, run that meeting to make sure we can get through everybody in the time um, in two weeks. So does that make sense? Is everyone on the same page? Uh, if so, um, I could uh, share my screen. And um, Mr. Lippin, uh, yes. quick question regarding what you just said. Are we still in fact going to just do, once we get past the public hearings and we start doing the applications for the um, conditional use permits and the site plans. Are you going to limit them to just the three per meeting for that night? I, so it, I think that that is uh, really the, the decision uh, of the, the chair and your, and your officers when we do agenda setting. Um, but, um, you know, and you could certainly, I'm trying to remember if we had a motion to that effect. Uh, but I believe we had a consensus and discussion among plan planning commission that that's the way you wanted to do it. So I, I think what I would recommend us do is um, use three as a guideline. Um, but since uh, most of the applicants are still working on revisions from their uh, first site plan review, um, I don't really know which will be ready. Um, so it could be you know, if we decide um, to move forward with the ones that have uh, site plans that have substantively met requirements that maybe only one will be ready for a follow-up meeting after our public hearings. Um, and, and then I think say all six of them were ready for follow-up. Um, you know, we could decide to, to do a special meeting um, and, you know, do it on two consecutive nights or something like that. So I think, um, you know, rather than saying we're going to do, you know, three and then two weeks later, another three, I think there are some options we could consider for getting through them quicker, but also not in one sitting. Um, although I think it's totally reasonable to do three and then three and then three. So if, if, um, they're, if they're prepared, obviously, we don't want we don't want to go through the process if they're not ready. Well, exactly. I, I think the main thing that I want to do is if there's a site um, that is 
you know, Ready uh, has, you know, really done a good job with their conditional use application uh, and has a, a really good site plan uh, proposal that substantively meets all the ordinance requirements. You know, I think we want to get that going as soon as we can, right? And I just don't know how many will fall into that category yet. I agree, but and that's why I'm bringing that point to you now because you're going to, to be the, you're going to be the point person that's going to make these determinations and bring them to the planning commission. Also, it really won't matter what order or who goes first or last. Um, I think that we could, as a commission, table any decisions to for, to approve, not approve, or proof with conditions, uh, and do them all at a at a single meeting, um, all at once after all the applicants have uh, gone through the process. So I really don't feel that um, there's a, a crisis with who goes first and who, who's gonna be last. That's a good point, I hadn't considered that, but certainly we could do it. Like you said, we could review each of the cases, you know, that were ready even on several meetings and then you could have a, a decision on all six of them on one night. That, I that would be a, a probably a pretty good way to do it. Yeah, I, I think that would be best, and, and that's my opinion, but I think that's the most fair. But I'd like to hear uh, from the other commissioners if they agree with that, then maybe that's the way we can proceed. Um, was Mr. Zarzecki? No, that's a great way to proceed. Um, I guess my only concern is this first presentation. If you only limit them to three slides, that's not going to be much to give to the public. Uh, I would sooner give them uh, a time of five minutes, whatever they can present in five minutes. That's it. And then we go to the public comments. Okay. That's a good idea. Uh, Mr. Iquinto. I, I concur. I believe that that is uh, a very proper way to handle the uh, site plan reviews with the approvals. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Dwyer. I absolutely agree. I don't want this to be a, a horse race. First past the post gets the gets the license, especially when we've got multiple applicants clustered close together. There may be one better than the other two, for instance, rather than giving three licenses to three businesses within a stone's throw of each other. I think we need to need, need the whole picture first uh, before we uh, make any such decisions. Thank you. Ms. Chick? This is Cecilia here. I want to say I agree. I'm sorry. You you agree with that? Absolutely. Thank you. Ms. Yeah. Chick? I agree with the rest of the commissioners. I think that's a good um, plan. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how much information that the applicants want to share. Um, Mr. Lippens, maybe you could um, determine if five minutes is enough or 10 minutes per person is enough, just so that they get to say what they want to say and still show what they want to show. Mr. Cruz and all. Are we referring to uh, the public hearing sections? Is that what we're talking about right now? Correct. Yes. Okay. And, and kind of going into the um, to to the next meetings where we would be doing reviews. But yes, right now. Okay, that's fine. I, I've got no problem with with what you're proposing. Thank you, Mr. Lippins. I think it's good uh, to if he could narrow it to the five minutes because as a standard. Um, that's typically what we we would give a person representing a group uh, to address the commission. Um, it's in our bylaws, uh, three minutes per person, five uh, per person representing a group. So I think uh, five minutes may be adequate uh, within, within reason of five minutes. Um, an applicant should be able to uh, do any kind of PowerPoint, whatever they wanted to present to the commission um, that they deem necessary and um, leave it at that. But that, you know, that's what I would be looking for. Mr. Zarzecki. Um, Paul, if they're going to give a PowerPoint, uh, you should tell them that they're going to have to provide a printout of that PowerPoint to each one of us. So we have it as a reference. That's a good point, Mr. Zarzecki. That's, that's a good suggestion. So that was one of my questions too, would be if we would want their presentation to be submitted for the packet. Yes. Uh, which I think is, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, even, that's even better. Yes. That way the public has them as well. It'll be another big packet though. Hey. <laughs> Understood. 
but um, but I think if we if we follow these um, these simple guidelines, I think it'll be most fair for all applicants and uh, move the move the public hearing along in a good fashion. Mr. Iquinto. I would like to see if Mr. Roman or Mr. Lippins, you guys could request that we all get printed packets, please. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's too, very difficult to go through it online, as I have experienced. Mm -hmm. um, Miss Miss Bird would probably be able to provide that. I, I actually get hard copies of all of our packets, so uh, right. Miss Bird wants to confirm. I, I don't think it would be an issue, Miss Bird. Um. Yep. I'll try to do my best. Thank, Thank you, you, Mary. Hmm? Thank you. Uh, anyone else on any I, anything that Mr. Lippin spoke about so far? I think that about covers it. Mr. Lippins, I'll let you continue. Uh, certainly. Um, so um, if that's the kind of conclusion on our discussion on logistics, um, I think we have a consensus. Um, as the chair pointed out, um, if we schedule even our site plan review and discussion, and then um, that would allow us to handle three cases at a time, and then uh, we could just make a decision on all of those cases at the next uh, following meeting. Um, so I, I actually think that that's a really good way to do it. Um, I do think that we wanna not have experienced decision fatigue when we get to that point. Um, and, and so um, I think that's good guidance. Uh, and then with relating to the, the uh, discussion on the public hearings, um, the feedback I'm getting is uh, we want a five minute limit presentation, uh, PowerPoints are good, but any printed material they want to share uh, that they can provide in the packet. And actually if we do it that way, then I could potentially even uh, run the PowerPoint for them. Trustee Chick. Uh, can you tell me when or if they already have had put the notices on the properties yet for the public hearings? I have, I yeah. saw probably three notes today. Mary? They have. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, so if that uh, concludes, um, the logistics discussion, I think the other thing I wanted to do was talk about the cases. And for that, um, I was gonna share my screen um, quickly. Um, just the first graphic I'm gonna show is uh, basically a chart that uh, Mary keeps that is kind of our running case list. Um, but this is a good place where I have all the addresses uh, and the, that have been filed. So I'm gonna show that. And then what I thought I could do is uh, then share my screen just of a Google map and go through and just show you the locations uh, for the existing all these sites. That way you can get a frame of mind for each location and maybe even take a spin around town and take a look. Um, and if you have questions, you, you could uh, uh, speak with the applicant at the public hearing about things. And um, I'm wondering if uh, Commissioner Iaquinto has a comment. I do, sir. Thank you. Paul, is there any way you can email this to us after the meeting as well so we have it for easy reference? Oh, yeah. Um, we can. I can put this in, in a, a packet for you. Mary, you. you don't have an issue with us sharing the pending packet uh, spreadsheet with PC, right? No, I don't. Yeah. It's, this is just how we track kind of what's going on in the status. And the one I'm going to show is old because uh, Mary always has the most recent, but um, I'm going to share my screen. And this is the document. Okay, so now you should basically see an uh, Excel chart here. Does everybody see that? Yes. Yeah. All right, so these are the cases that we have filed. Um, there are, um, let's see, is this, uh, 
Oh yeah, there was the pure buds. Green guys group. Um, I think that actually Michigan pure green is not on this one, but they would be filed after. So the first, so this is the date received. Um, and the, at the last meeting we talked about just putting these on the agenda in the order that the applications were filed. So the first application was filed by GS Ashley um, and it's for the 22 Barker site, um, which is often referred to as the family video site. Um, the second uh, application that was filed is, oh, um, I have this, this Moshi text amendment on here. This is actually the one that's been on hold while we've been working with the board to see if they were gonna give us a recommendation. This is for temporary marijuana events. So now that we've had action by the board, I probably will go ahead and schedule this public hearing um, at the soonest available as possible. Uh, the notice for our next meeting, the July 15th public hearing went out before the board made their decision. So that one is not scheduled for public hearing yet. Um, so following the uh, GS Ashley, um, the Green Guys group, um, uh, and they are located at 9545 Main. Um, Treehouse Wellness. Um, they are uh, located uh, next to the Lovely Monkey Tattoo. And um, also in the downtown area. Um, oh, actually they, uh, I think filed Oh, and then, yeah, okay. So the next filed was Great Lakes Logistics. Great Lakes is the one um, case that we'll be reviewing that is for a grower license, not for an adult uh, uh, retail or provisioning license. Um, they are located at 587 West Northfield Church Road. Uh, the next case to file uh, I believe was the Whitmore Wellness. Uh, Whitmore Wellness is at 8475 uh, Main Street. Uh, actually, Whitmore Wellness has changed their name to Pure Buds, but I, I leave it on here because they filed under Whitmore Wellness, but they will be actually calling their business Pure Buds. They are located in, at uh, the Bobber in the Bobber Down site, um, across the street from uh, the township office. The next to file was the Northern Trellis. Uh, Northern Trellis is at 50 North Territorial, and they are proposing to be cited at the southeast corner of North Territorial and Whitmore Lake Road. Um, and I'm going to pull up the map in a minute. And then um, I'm going to stop sharing now because I think actually the last case was submitted after this was created. Um, and then we'll go over to um, the maps. Um, but yeah, the last case is Michigan Pure Green. Um, and I'm just pulling up the address on Michigan Pure Green, which is in the public hearing notice. Uh, Michigan Pure Green is, is at 52 Barker. Um, they are... Um, in the party store, I'm trying to remember the name of the party store, uh, but it's the site that Somer runs. Um, what's the name of his store again? Is it Little Porkies? It used to be Little Porkies. It's, I think it's changed now, but I can't remember the name. Yep. Okay. Um, so um, those are the six cases. 
Um, and I'm going to share my screen just for because uh, we, you know, we do have some people uh, now attending the meeting who might want to see this too. So, um, if I pull up Google Maps. And then I got to scroll over to the township. Okay. Um, now I'm going to share my screen again. Um, all right. So now you should see a Google map. Does everybody see a Google map there? Yes. Yep. All right. So just kind of going back through these. Um, the first, all right, here we go. Sorry, getting a little turned around. All right, so the first site is um, GS Ashley's proposal is for the corner of Barker in Maine. And that is the family video, old family video store. Um, like I said, we're not really discussing, you know, uh, any of these cases tonight. So I'm just showing, taking you on a tour to see the locations. Um, I guess I don't have to go in the order now. I'm just going to go in the direction that, you know, what's closest. So the, the other site, uh, Michigan Pure Green, is here. Uh, so those are obviously both downtown and within 1,000 feet of each other. Uh, the other uh, downtown site that is within 1,000 feet of this location is um, the um, this building. And it's, uh, I think that they have the whole building uh, mm -hmm. under contract. Um, but it would be uh, in this suite, I think, is what's being proposed. <clears throat> so um, that's three. Uh, then we have, um, I'll, I'll go first, uh, keep with the um, retail and provisioning uses. Um, Of course, everyone's very familiar uh, with Bobber Down. Um, I understand that they are planning to hopefully relocate. Um, I know we all like to visit there, um, but this is the building and um, this is being proposed by uh, the business now called Pure Buds. Um, there is another app application, a marijuana facility application within 1,000 feet of this location, but they have not filed a uh, site plan or conditional use application at this time. Um, moving down here, um, we have this site. This is, uh, I believe, Northern Trellis. Um, Oh, I should actually, I should go back. Um, I did not say the names of these. So I think part of the reason why I'm doing this is so that everyone kind of recognizes the name of the application with the place. This is the Treehouse Wellness applicant. Um, and then um, on the site uh, for the party store, um, this is the Michigan Pure Green application. I right. thought that was important to make sure I mention everybody's name. Um, a little farther than I thought. Okay, so back over here. This is Northern Trellis. Um, Is that it? No, that's not it. Uh, here it is. Those corners look pretty similar. <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, over here. Uh, this is the site. So 
Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this location as well. Um, the building has, this is a probably a better view of the building. Um, so this is also a proposal for a provisioning and cultivation. I'll show the other side. Um, can't really see it from over here. That's it back there. Um, okay, so that is, and then the five, that's the five growing. And then um, the one uh, cultivation license uh, by Great Lakes Logistics. I'm just gonna type their address in because I probably wouldn't be able to find it as quickly. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's West. Oh, sorry, I typed the address well, wrong. Northfield Church, is that what you're looking for? Yes, thank you. I appreciate the help there. <laughs> Yeah, we were just at 50 North Territory. I tapped in the address where we already were. <laughs> um, okay, so we're over here. Uh, I think it's on west. So. Just trying to grab a frame of reference here because sometimes the address doesn't uh, cite right on the site, but I actually, I think this is it. I think it's, yeah, because there's a wetland um, and then it goes through. So this one, there is a private road application as well, um, but they've not moved forward with the tree inventory on that. So anyway, this is the location, the parcel lines aren't here. Um, and just for reference, um, see it's about three quarter mile um, west of Whitmore Lake Road on North, Northfield Church. All right, so that's the little tour. Um, Outside of the logistics discussion and transmitting all the case files to planning commission, that's really what I thought I could do tonight. Um, I know personally, I thought that would be helpful um, just because I've been doing a lot of that in the last couple of months. Um, and I want everyone to, you know, have a good understanding of what's in your packet, um, good understanding of what the cases are coming up and that we have a plan to work through this efficiently. Um, so I guess the other thing we could just talk about, if there are any planning commissioner comments on things that I can do to prepare the information for your packet, um, you know, I need you to do anything that would make it useful for you. I also heard earlier that printed packets are going to be important. So that's good to know now. So we can plan ahead for that. Yeah. Anyone? I have nothing. I have uh, a quick question. Yes. Oh, it's Cecilia. Um, in one, I actually read the whole thing because I thought I didn't, I was, I thought I had missed a memo and we were going to talk about all of them today. But in some of them, we have the letters from the neighbors that would be near the site. And in some we don't, although sometimes it mentions that the, they've received, you've received letters. Um, that means a real lot to me, and I'm wondering if there's a way that we could have those letters or an indication of, you know, whether or not they've received them, maybe even copies um, in the packet. I'm so sorry to increase the size of our packet. <laughs> I think that's a great question. So in some cases, uh, people will, you know, 
supply us with the with letters that they've requested from their neighbors uh, as part of their application packet. Um, we don't specifically ask for that information um, as part of a, an application. Um, I, I don't mind telling people, but I certainly would take this opportunity to remind any residents that are participating tonight um, that you can submit uh, written comments as part of the conditional use approval, um, sending a letter to uh, you know either the manager or um, you can send it to myself through Ms. Bird. Uh, you know that information will, will be put in the packet if you're not able to attend a meeting. Um, we certainly do appreciate written comments. And I, I saw Sam had his hand up as well. Um, and then I, I don't see him. I don't see him either. Do you want to go ahead, Janet, while we're waiting for Sam? Yeah, I just wanted to say um, I know there's been some issue with people not particularly liking Zoom because it's difficult for them to connect and um, and keep a connection. So um, as you said, I encourage people to either call the township with their comments before. Uh, after whatever works for them. But if they're going to send something to the township that want, has to be in the packet, they've got to send it in at least five days before the meeting or it won't get into the packet. So um, yeah, make sure you get your comment, email, phone call, whatever you want in um, our letter, make sure it's in five days before the packet goes out. <clears throat> so like next- I, I still see Sam with his hand up. Mr. Zarzecki. Okay, uh, Paul, just to comment, a lot of your um, comments or issues that have to be cleared, you make the statement uh, that they re you recommend a note stating compliance with a specific standard be added to the drawings. I'm not aware that we've been putting those kind of statements on other drawings for compliance. You there know, are... Uh, so I did, I did ask for that, um, but there, this is a pretty unique use in that um, there are standards, operational standards that um, we want an agreement put on the plan and that to be a part of the plan record. So in terms of tracking these uses long term, uh, the easiest way is to look at the site plan, see what was approved. Uh, and make sure that when we do inspections or understand what was approved, that that information is included on the site plan. So with respect to those, those uh, standards that are essentially agreements um, that they're gonna make about the way they operate the business, by putting it on the site plan, that's the only way we, well, it's not the only way, but that's a really sure way of saying, the applicant is aware of this standard, and they've placed it on the site plan and it's part of the approval. Their compliance with the standard is part of their approval. Oh, okay, I, I, I was just wondering if it would have been better to have a specific uh, checklist of standards that they have to agree to or rather than put them on the drawings, but either way it works. I was just curious that we had not done that on previous drawings for conditional use. Good question. Uh, Ms. Chick. So um, to piggyback on that, we're not asking the applicants to do more than any other applicant for any other business, are we? Above and beyond what they're required to do by the state? No, and I, this is a conditional use requirement. I, like it, not just with uh, marijuana use, really with any use that has a standard that is a, an operational standard, I'll frequently ask for notes to be placed on plans and it might not be something that you're paying attention to, but it is something that I, I'll request. A lot of times, uh, like a good example would be in lieu of, and this is not even a special land use requirement, but a lot of times you can really tell uh, by, um, you know, a site visit if the lighting is in compliance with a code. So in those cases, uh, I might say, put a, a lighting note on the plan stating you'll comply with our lighting requirement, you know? Um, so it's, it really is a common thing to do. And um, 
what I want to make sure is when these uh, reviews come through, that we can confidently say that each applicant understands the requirements and has agreed to all the requirements. Um, and by having those requirements on the site plan, I think what we're communicating uh, is that the applicant understands those requirements and has addressed them in a shorthand, you know, so you don't have to necessarily uh, read their 80 page application packet to see their business operation plan. We ask them to pull those standards, you know, and put them right on the site plan. So. Uh, Mr. Lippitz, I don't see Mr. Iquinto unless you do. You said that no, he he's, he's lowered his hand. So I think it was a remnant. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he, he raised it again. <laughs> Sam? Oh, he lowered it. There you go. He raised it. He's messing with us now. <laughs> All right, Sam. Can you unmute him like you did me, perhaps? Is he muted? Oh, he's muted. All right. Oh, where is he? <laughs> Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Sorry, Sam. Yes. I, I didn't I realize... You I lost power, so I had to re get at, I had to go back in, and that's I sent you the communication. If you could pull on my screen, but uh, uh, okay, sorry, Sam. No problem. Do you, you have a comment? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure that I could be heard for the balance of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lippins. So I don't see any other comments, but um. Just so, so we uh, go over that again regarding the public hearing and the applicant making a presentation, because the applicant also makes a, pres a brief presentation at the public hearing um, when, when I call them up and they, they give a short presentation. If you can make it known to them that a uh, five minute limit on that, along with the five, li five minute limit, um, when they do come in front of the planning commission review for the uh, conditional use permit and the uh, in the site plan. So if you could make that known to them, um, because we don't want to have six public hearings and the applicants going on for excessive amount of time in order to get them all done in one. Yeah. And I think if we ask for that okay. presentation in advance too, it will make it run quickly. So. Okay. Very good. Anyone else have comments, questions, comments on this item? I don't see any. And I, I assume this, Infante and Mr. Iquinto do not. Um, so we'll move on to uh, item 10. There's no new business. Item 11 is um, approval of, of minutes from June 17th. I make a motion we approve the minutes to dispense with reading. Is there support? Support, support by Mr. Iquinto. Any questions, comments, or corrections on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Ayes have it. Uh, we'll go to the final call to the public, Mr. Lippins. All right. Uh, we will go back to the public, um, give everybody an opportunity to make a comment. Um, I do see that there is uh, uh, one person in the public who would like to speak to uh, Planning Commission, uh, Steve Grono. Um, I met with Steve this week and suggested he might want to um, talk with you. So Steve, I'm, I'm allowing you to speak. Um, Planning Commission should be able to hear you now. Uh, thank you. Three minutes. Yep. Two. Three minutes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul, and thank you, uh, Chairman Larry. I uh, appreciate the, the, the uh, do you have me on video too or not, or uh, camera? I do not see you. Okay. I, I have my camera on in case you want to turn it on, Paul. I'm not sure if that's possible. I just I thought it'd be can, great to see me. Larry, do you have an objection to uh, seeing Steve on video? Oh, go ahead. Uh, so, Steve, I think I promoted you to panelists. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. And I'll respect your time. Um, well, folks, I'm just a small home builder here in Livingston County. I admit I've done nothing in Northfield Township, nothing in Washtenaw County in my career. I'm uh, just here to introduce myself tonight because I'm going to be submitting um, a proposal to the 
uh, to you folks to consider a project that I'd like to do at the corner of um, Whitmore Lake Road and North Territorial on the Leland Farm, which is sort of infamous uh, <laughs> due to uh, uh, prior events in the township, um, which I kind of studied up on. Um, I, I, I'm uh, just uh, by way of introduction, uh, some of you might want to Google me um, just to know who I am and what, what my, where my heart's at in this. Uh, Chestnut Home Builders is a local Livingston County home builder, been here for 35 years. I build multifamily communities, um, basically sort of luxury ranch apartments um, for folks looking to uh, simplify their life. Um, I do it in kind of a high-end way and uh, I also build single family homes that are designed for seniors and uh, folks in the second half of life. I'm 63 years old. I'm going to pursue my career another <laughs> seven or eight years, uh, <clears throat> as long as uh, the Lord gives me some health. Uh, and um, my goal is to uh, complete a couple of uh, signature projects. My, um, my crowning achievement would be this project that I'm going to propose in Northfield township. Um, and uh, I'd like it to be sort of a swan song for us. So um, when you see it, just um, I'd like you to relate it to me a little bit. Uh, maybe do some homework on me. I, I, I'm sorry I don't know any of you personally, and I, I can't give you any personal um, um, references other than those are, that are known to the public. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very close to Livingston County, and uh, you're, you're my neighbor to the south. So uh, all, my only goal tonight was to let you know who I am and, and what I would like to do there. Uh, on that 90 acre corner, the Leland farm there at North territorial and Whitmore Lake road. I, I would like to build some apartments there about 200 of them. I'd like to do about 75 single family homes there. Uh, my, uh, my, my uh, experience in the market tells me that we have to bring homes forward for people earning under uh, the average wage uh, to fill the, to fill the school that's adjacent to me uh, under $300,000 homes, uh, which I'd love to do in a, in a quality way that folks can still afford. 30 seconds, Mr. Gronow. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, um, uh, I'll be submitting some, some plans to the township soon where you can see what it looks like. I'll probably zoom in on, on the public hearing here in the next meeting or so, just to give you a little more insight into what we'd like to do. And, uh, I, I welcome a relationship with your community. Thanks for your time guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Any other calls to the public? I'm not seeing any other uh, members of the public um, with their hand up. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zarzecki, comments from commissioners? Um, no comments at this point. I think we've gone through enough. Thank you. Ms. Chick? Um, not really. I just wanted to wish everybody a happy 4th of July and be safe out there. <laughs> Mr. Kuzno? God bless America. <laughs> Mr. Dwyer? Uh, no, nothing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll celebrate too, by the way. <laughs> Ms. Infante? I have only one thing because I didn't get my DDA report in. 75 Barker has been sold and signed. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Iquinto. Thank you. Uh, ditto Janet's uh, comments and uh, others. Uh, everyone enjoy the 4th. Have a safe holiday and uh, get outside and do something that you uh, would love to do. Thank you. Thank you. I'll announce the next regular meeting, July 15th, 2020, and make a motion to adjourn. Support. Support by Mr. Iquino. Any uh, questions, comments? Seeing none, we'll, uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Be safe. Have a good evening. Bye, Cecilia.